St. Matthew's, we gather together for Holy Eucharist Rite 2. Blessed be God, Father, kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts, hearts are, are open, open, all, all desires, desires known, and, and from, from you, you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts, thoughts of our hearts by the by inspiration of your, of your Holy Spirit, Spirit that we, we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify, magnify your holy name. Through, through Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of praise this morning is hymn number 551. chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading for the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidium, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Masa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord not among us? Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We continue reading the portions of Psalm 78 as printed in the bulletin responsibly by half verse. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times. That which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us. 
We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord. And the wonderful, wonderful works he has done. He worked marvels in the sight of their forefathers. In the land of Egypt, in the fields of Zohar. He split open the sea and let them pass through. He made, he made the waters stand up like walls. He led them with a cloud by day. And all the night through the glow of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness. And he gave them grain as from the great sea. He brought streams out of the cliff. And the waters gushed out like rivers. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in a full accord of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourself. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likenesses. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together we stand to sing the Celtic Alleluia. <laughs> Why did you not believe him? 
But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second son and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Dear God, please be with us this day and every day as we try our best to stand up for racial, social, and moral injustices. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. On September 18th, we lost an amazing trailblazer named Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She was an Associate Justice of the Supreme Court who served for over 27 years. She was appointed by President Bill Clinton on August 10, 1993. Her roots and her life history help us to under understand just why she fought so relentlessly for the issues of gender discrimination and for so many other issues to help, to help protect the rights of the underserved and the voiceless. Her birth name was Joan Ruth Batter, and she was born in Brooklyn, New York on March 15, 1933, to immigrant Jewish parents. Now the name Ruth in Hebrew means friend or companion, and it is derived from the Old Testament biblical figure, Ruth, who when widowed, chose to remain with her mother-in-law, Naomi, despite the tradition of returning when widowed to her birth family. In my sermon, I'm going to refer to Ruth Bader Ginsburg simply as Ruth. Please understand that I am not doing this out of any ill respect, disrespect for her, but rather out of a kinship and connectedness that I feel with her because she was a woman who stood up for what she believed in, in the same way that a deacon also stands up to address the needs and concerns of people. Now before I delve into the various challenges that Ruth faced, I would like to share with you a one little tidbit about her history that you may not know, which is that she was a cheerleader at her high school and her nickname was Kiki. And I can only imagine her little statue and cheerleading at 5'1", but in any case, that begins to show what, who she was. She was a determined woman. And Ruth experienced growing up in Brooklyn in a racially and ethnically diverse neighborhood. Her mother believed in education and installed that upon her daughter. Her mother believed that through education and hard work, you could succeed in America. 
and Ruth certainly didn't disappoint her mother. She attended Harvard Law School, where there were only nine women in her class of 500. She faced gender-based discrimination the minute that she stepped foot on the campus from the highest authorities, who chastised her for taking a man's spot at Harvard Law School. In her final year, Ruth moved to New York City and attended Columbia Law School and graduated at the top of her class. At all of the many steps of her distinguished career, Ruth faced gender-based challenges in the extremely male-dominated field of law. However, I believe that Ruth faced the challenges of being a woman in a male-dominated world with both grace and fortitude. Ruth faced gender discrimination at every step of the way during her illustrious career, but that did not stop her. It seems as though that through the challenges that she faced, it just empowered her to stand up for the beliefs all the more. Ruth stood up for gender equality rights in so many ways. And she had a motto which I'd like to share with you, which said, she stood up for what she believed in, and this is what it said. Fight for the things that you care about, but do it in ways that will lead others to join you. Now, I think that we could all learn from that important motto, which is exactly how Jesus operated over 2,000 years ago. I believe that Jesus was a gentle spirit whose manner made his believers follow him to the ways of justice, truth, healing, and most importantly, to love. Ruth learned that you needed to stand up for what you believed in, and she fought for that belief while she served our nation as one of only four women in, on the Supreme Court since its inception in 1789. At her death, Ruth became the first woman and person of Jewish faith in the history of our nation to lay in state at our U.S. Capitol on Friday. Our nation is facing some extremely difficult times with our growing awareness of historical and current racial injustices, as well as our sorrow over the approximately 207,000 Americans who have died from COVID-19. It seems like the very basis of who we are as a nation is being challenged from so many different directions. And it is at times like this that I turn to God and to prayer to help settle my soul. And I would like to share with you a prayer for our nation that is found in our Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves to be a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. Endure with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that they may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to thy law we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in thee to fail which we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In other words, in these times of uncertainty, 
I implore you to turn to God for help, comfort, and love. Moses turns to the Lord and asks for help in the Exodus reading from the Old Testament that we heard this morning. When people were thirsty and complaining to Moses about their predicament, the Lord tells Moses, strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses turned to God during his difficult time of providing for his people and God showed him the way. And from Psalm 78, the same message is exemplified as well. It says, We will recount to generations yet to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful work that he has done. We must trust and turn to God to help us and to show us the way to comfort and love. Jesus' ministry wasn't to the rich and famous. As a rabbi, he didn't bow down to the religious authorities. His ministry was to help the widow and the orphan, the lame and the possessed, and women and children. All of those who were living on the fringes of society. All of those who were ignored and not seen by the powers that be. He wanted his disciples, and us for that matter, to stand up for the downtrodden and oppressed. He wants us to see and recognize who is in need in our own community, to see who is being treated unfairly within our court systems, to see who is being detained under false pretenses just because of the color of their skin, and where they come from. He wants to open our eyes to truly see those who need our attention and our voices. As I have said to you before as your deacon, I would encourage you to be Jesus' hands and feet in this troubled world, to see the pain and suffering of our neighbors of those whose families are living on the streets and in mobile homes because they have lost income and of the rents charged in our area. The question becomes, how are you going to stand up to the injustices that surround us right now? How can you use your position of power to help those in need? Ruth Bader Ginsburg came from immigrant parents who believed in her. She went to the most prestigious law schools in our nation, and she was told that she didn't belong or deserve to be at those schools while she was there. As a result of the challenges that she faced, she fought for equal education, equal rights for women her entire life. We will surely miss Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Her presence and stature, even though she was only five foot one, she would stand up to make a difference in so many lives so through her serving on the Supreme Court with grace and fortitude. Let us pray. Ruth, into paradise, may angels lead you. At your coming, may the martyrs receive you and bring you into the holy city, Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Together we stand and affirm our faith, reciting together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one, one God, God, the Father, Father the Almighty, the Almighty <coughs> maker of heaven, heaven and earth, earth of all that is, is seen and unseen. unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We especially pray for Donald, our president, and Gavin, our governor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to the honor and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please walk with our parish as we participate in the Sacred Ground series dealing with racial healing and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray for all those suffering from COVID-19, for the doctors and nurses caring for them, and for the researchers working on developing a vaccine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for Richard and all those on our parish prayer list. We pray for all those affected by the wildfires fires in our state and for firefighters who are working tirelessly to control them. We commend to your gracious care all members and families of our armed forces at home or abroad, our government employees serving overseas and their families. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we remember the people and clergy of the province of the Episcopal Church of Sudan. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Ruth Bader Ginsburg, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Together let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Together we stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace. Peace be with you, everybody. We have a few blessings and anniversaries to celebrate. First of all, Frida and James. They got married yesterday, so I want to share out a big shout out to them uh, for, uh, for their marriage and for many more years to come together. Also have a few anniversaries to celebrate. Alex and Veronica, happy 17th anniversary. Tom and Claire, I know it was your anniversary last week, but uh, we are blessing you this week uh, to have extended anniversary celebration. So congratulations. Happy birthday, Wendy, Averill, Watan, uh, over in the UK. And also for Charlie, Charlie Beecher, it's your birthday too. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Loving God, we ask your blessings upon all those who share in anniversaries and in marriage and in birthdays. We ask that you continue to bless them and guide them to walk the ways of love so that we can be filled, they may be examples of your great love. And may they continue to be examples of love to one another and to all those who they share their lives with in all the places that they call home. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everyone. If you do have an anniversary or, or, or a life celebration or a birthday that you'd like to celebrate, feel, please feel free to put it on the comments. Or you could send it up to Victoria at our parish office, and we will put it on for next week. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice for God. The uh, offertory hymn this morning comes from uh, Lift Every Voice and Sing. It's hymn number 143, printed in your bulletin.
give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right unto God's thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me therefore according to his command O father we remember his death we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Matthew and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
for the people of God. We're separated by distance and not able to share the cup and the bread. A uh, reminder that Christ told us that whenever two or three are gathered together in his name, he will be there in the midst of us. You have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit abide with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome again to St. Matthew's on this 17th Sunday after the Pentecost. I'd like to first thank our worship team again for always sharing that beautiful gift of music out there. I see Alana, Owen, Suki, Tim, Philip. Thank you so much. Thank you to our altar guild. I see Bobby out there. I know Carol's probably back there somewhere. Uh, and also Luna for setting up our, uh, our flowers today. Uh, thank you, Father Eric, for leading us in worship. And thank you, Deacon Lauren, for inviting us to reflect on the life of Justice Ginsburg and of inviting a bit of a whole lot of prayer and contemplation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rowan, for doing the camera. And thank you out there also for sharing in our, in our spiritual communion together. Um, uh, we are nothing without each other, and that's deep truth. Um, a few announcements. Uh, one is next week we're going to be super busy. We have a lot of things going on. Not only do we have the Feast of St. Francis and the Blessing of Animals, uh, which you can see more of the details uh, upcoming in the bulletin. And we will have a live blessing of the animals here on campus right after our worship service. Uh, we will also have our town hall meeting. And maybe Father Eric probably will say a little bit more about our town hall meeting, which will be right after the blessing of the animals. Uh, it will be a Zoom meeting, so you can find the details uh, published uh, along with the service materials. Uh, among other things, we always give an update of church finances. Uh, Ming will tell us a little bit about our online presence and uh, have a little bit of information about that. We'll also have a chance to meet our new interim head of school, Ralph Wales, and uh, we will, would love to meet you in person, but this is the next best thing. So that and more will be a part of the uh, Zoom Town Hall meeting. I hope that uh, most of you can find a way to attend. That'll be at noon next Sunday. We are having Zoom coffee hour also. So just give Deacon Lauren a few minutes to set up because uh, uh, she'll just, uh, and, uh, get out of the, uh, the, the, the alb and the fancy clothes there. So, uh, but she'll set up uh, in a few minutes right after our service. Um, another thing that I wanted to, uh, to share is that for those who are wondering, hey, what happened to the confirmation program? We are firing that up again. Our youth confirmation program will be starting up in the month of October. Um, I've asked uh, Janine Gerzanis and John Edwards to take the lead on that. 
And so, Confirmants, if you're out there and you haven't chosen yet your sponsor, please go ahead and choose your sponsor out there and you will see a, a, a lot of information coming up for uh, confirmation. The reason why we can say that is because the bishop has announced that he will be visiting us sometime in June. June I think actually Sunday, June 13th. So we actually have a date here at St. Matthew's, hopefully here at St. Matthew's, where we can actually do a confirmation. More on that to come. I think that might be it for announcements. Our closing hymn is hymn number 408 in our hymnal or in our bulletin. God bless you.